The thing that most streamers always seem to want has boiled down to one nifty device, the TC Helicon Gaming Go XLR. Problem is, it isn't cheap. The full-size Go XLR costs about $500 and the Mini costs $250. The biggest draw to these, in my opinion, is the level of audio control that you get, being able to use all those faders to control all the different audio source volumes. Well, guess what? This is the Korg Nano Control 2. See all these faders? Yeah. Let's talk about a budget Go XLR alternative. My name is Chris, this is Coalition Gaming, and today I'll be your stream technician. Real quick, if you're new around here and are into PC hardware tech gaming streaming tips, tutorials, news, and reviews, then you're in the right place. Hit that subscribe button and that bell so you don't miss a single upload. Also, I stream to Twitch every Friday night at 8 p.m. Pacific at twitch.tv slash Coalition Gaming Crew. So feel free to drop a follow and stop into a stream and talk some tech. When you stream a lot, it kind of feels like you become an expert at audio management. If you want your stream to sound the way you want it to, you will be fine tuning all sorts of things. And you can take things even further with virtual mixers like voice meter or trying to make things work using hardware mixers and uh, interfaces. All this can get very complicated and that's why the Go XLR is such a huge draw. It simplifies everything into one box pretty much. But let's say you have a microphone set up you're already happy with, but you want additional finer audio control. A while back, I did a video that showed you that Windows integrated more advanced audio routing and volume mixer control linked up above or down in the description below. But adjusting volumes in the Windows volume mixer requires alt tabbing and clicking a bunch of stuff and yeah, it's, it's not all that convenient. Fellow tech fan member Charles, aka Tech Always, did a video covering a DIY Arduino based solution using a software called Deej that lets you control your Windows volume mixer with knobs or faders that you built and soldered together yourself. Video also linked above and down below, it's worth checking out. Then I saw someone on Twitter post a picture of this thing with eight faders, a MIDI controller for professional audio work. This led me down a rabbit hole to see if I can use this to control my Windows volume mixer. Lo and behold, a developer named Huber has developed a lightweight software called NK2 Tray that lets you go, that lets you do exactly this. So let's get down to the desktop and I'll show you guys how to use it. All right, so we're down here at the desktop in my streaming setup so I can show you guys everything. So uh, yeah, basically we're gonna navigate to the website. Let me switch over to the desktop scene so I can show you. Gotta get the download and then the install process which is very straightforward. So I, all I did was search NK2 tray on YouTube, or not YouTube, Google, and it came up right here. However, if you're not sure on that, just uh, well look down in the description below. I'm gonna leave a link to the download page for it. So uh, as far as I know, this is just for Windows. I'm not sure if you can get it working on anything else. I don't see any comment of it being on any other operating system. So if you're not on Windows, join the Discord for the developer and see what they've got as a solution for you. Anyways, we're going to download the nk2trade.exe file. And when you download it, there it is. It's a very, very small file. And execute the file to install it. Again, it's very quick, very lightweight. Make sure you have your Nano Control 2 already plugged in before installing it though, so it properly recognizes it. It will throw an error if you install it and you don't have the Nano Control 2 plugged in already. So you will see down here <clears throat> a little blue icon. You hover over it, it says NK2 Tray. You can right click it. And this is where you do all the setup. There's no fancy UI or anything like that. It's just right here. And as you can see, I already assigned some things to my faders but all you do is basically go over to which fader like here's fader one fader one right here it's the first fader left to right i assigned my headset so it essentially would work as a master audio fader and then the second one i assigned discord so if people are being loud in discord i can just pull the fader down and it will lower the volume in discord then over here fader three is chrome so if i have music playing in chrome and i can show you guys here i'm going to hit the play button on here because these buttons also work 
yeah, there's some music, but hey. So let me show you exactly what's going on here. So uh, I'm going to pull up the volume mixer by right clicking down here uh, on the speaker, hitting open volume mixer. And I'm going to stretch it out so we can see everything that I got. There is the volume mixer. So like I mentioned that the headset is assigned to fader one, you'll see, you'll see everything moving to the map. Basically, that's the master. So now I could do that. Now, the master, for some reason, has a little bit of lag in it. So that's interesting, but it will work. So like if I slide it all the way down real fast, you see that everything takes a second to catch up. I'm not sure why it does that, but it does that. Now, you can assign system sounds as well. So if I go to here, I can go over to, uh, let's, uh, where would we, right here, system sounds. And that will be on fader five. One, two, three, four, five. Five and now you can see that one moving up and down by itself. Now it's not as laggy when you're controlling individual stuff, it's actually pretty responsive. And then Firefox, I'm not sure which one I put in it. Fader 3, no, nope, that's Chrome. Fader 3 is uh, 4 is Firefox. You can also just match it up to that to make it easier for you. I was just messing with it, and that's what I did. And you can see when I hit the mute button, the icon will change. Yeah, I watched everyone died. I was like. <laughs> And, uh, and then I go over to Chrome, same thing. Chrome had music playing, so I'm going to unmute that and, uh, and then hit play. That one, okay. I'm still getting used to this thing, by the way, if you can't tell. Discord is right there as well on, there it is, Fader. Two. Now, Discord has two little things here, and what the developer did was tie both of their icons to a single fader because one is for like the noises Discord makes when you're joining servers or doing stuff like that, um, and one is for the actual voices. Now, that apparently they can be individually controlled. However, it can cause problems with how you assign them to the faders currently in this build, so the developer just tied them together. So you can adjust it all with one fader there. Now, one thing I haven't done, if like, let's say you're getting, you're streaming and you're getting really loud um, alerts in OBS. Well, I have OBS open right now. I'm gonna put OBS on fader six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And now you can see I can adjust the volume of OBS. With OBS added now on fader six, I'm gonna go ahead and click a button to replay a, uh, a previous follow. And uh, you see- Excellent! Too loud. But I can bring it back. Do you see that? That that's actually really nifty. Or you know, same thing. Excellent. Oh, quick mute. Yeah. And then I unmute it, and there we go. Now I have OBS audio control on a fader on this device here without having to like. If I'm in a game, I don't need to Alt Tab and open this volume mixer, and come over here and adjust things manually. So that is one of the. This is the basics of uh, like I really like this thing. I can't. I'm getting tongue tied just talking about it. It's really lightweight, really nifty. I I thought it was going to be some big old UI and something like that, uh, but it's actually pretty intuitive. And then you know on Fader Eight, I set focus. Now, when you're streaming, you're probably playing a bunch of different games. You're not playing the same game all the time. Maybe you are. Whatever the case is, if you are, then you can set that game to a specific fader and cool. But then if you switch games. Then you're going to have to go assign it to another fader. And the next thing you know, you're going to need a million faders to control all the sounds of all the different games. Yeah, that's not exactly the smartest thing. So I saw that focus was a choice. Focus is one that I like because if I'm in a game, focus is what the game is what is in focus. And I can co control the audio that way on the focus slider. So you won't see anything in Windows volume mixer adjust when I move that slider. But if I'm in a game, then you'll notice it. So let me launch a game and I will show you guys that. Uh, Modern Warfare, let's do that. Okay, so here I am with Modern Warfare up. And yeah, so basically what Focus does, if you're in a window, that active window, fo the, the fader for Focus will control that active window. So if you're in a game, that's your active window. So here I am making noises with it. And I adjusted the, fo the fader down. Now you can't hear it. Or if you want it a little quieter. There it is. We're back to full volume. Or I need to mute it real quick. Now it's unmuted. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> now I don't need to worry about setting any game specifically to a fader. It's just focus. And that's the game that I'm in. The fader is going to control it.
One thing I'm unaware of right now is what the knobs do. I'm not sure what the knobs do, if there's any function for them yet. These are designed for professional music production and other uses, so not everything on them is going to get used for what streamers are going to use it for or game, people doing uh, game recordings or stuff like that. And also, you have to be careful with the S button on these because that will deassign or it will unassign whatever that you've uh, mapped to that specific fader. So, like I said, like I said, there's focus on fader eight. I hit S, and uh, it's still there right now. But like now, I do this, it's gone. See? Now it's gone. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put that back to focus. Goes away, and uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, I, like, I, did I mention that it's uh, still a work in progress? So the the software crashed. Not a big deal. It's the first time I've seen it crash actually. So, unfortunate it happens while I'm recording, but. It's back, you just reopen the software. There's focus, hey, what do you know? So as long as you're not really messing with the software too much, I guess it won't crash. I'm not sure what the logarithmic thing does, but the basics, there you go. Go to a fader, assign it something from the choices here, and now your fader can control it. It's just that simple. So this Korg Nano Control 2 cost $75. Not the cheapest, but not the craziest price either. I'll leave a link down in the description below if you guys want to check this out. Honestly, I think this is awesome. The fact I can sort of integrate it to the top of my keyboard is also a plus for me. Being able to basically assign whatever I want to the faders, and it has plenty of faders, then control those things without having to exit any games or alt tab or any of that, well, it feels really pro you know if you know what i'm saying the developer himself is not totally comfortable with developing for windows so this could still evolve and become more powerful if any of you out there think you can help contribute to this project i'll leave the github page and the devs discord linked in the description as well could this work as an alternative to the go xlr depending on how you use it Absolutely. For me, this does what I'd want the a Go XLR to do, and I'm happy enough with the rest of the stuff in my setup that this really makes me happy. Do you think $75 is still too rich for your blood though? MIDI apps that can do what this Korg Nano Control 2 does do exist for iPhone and Android, and I've been made aware of a program that will let you use any MIDI controller to do what I've demonstrated. Maybe we can do it with a phone too? Drop a comment down below and let me know if this is something that you want to see. Anyways, stop in this Friday night at 8 p.m. Pacific to twitch.tv slash coalition gaming crew to catch this in use live during the weekly stream. If you liked this video, found it useful, educational, or otherwise informative, make sure to hit that subscribe button and that thumbs up button. Also, make sure to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, join our Discord, all that stuff. Everything linked down in the description below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye. We got related videos linked right over here, so make sure you check some of them out. All right, we got plenty of stuff, big bold backlog, definitely videos that'll interest you, so click one, okay? Click it. Clicked one yet?